ways that you need to be aware of. And remember, the whole point of CLESI is to make sure that you are meeting certain standards within the lab. So CLESI has different things that you should be conscious of. They have to do with pre-examination, post-examination, and things like that. When we're thinking about that, we have to ask ourselves, well, what about the examination am I doing as a phlebotomist? Like, what are we even talking about here? There's the patient that we're, we could be examining, but there's also the laboratory results that we could be examining, right? So when we're thinking about the pre-examination phase, the process also known as the pre-analytical phase, what is that? Well, that's basically the laboratory examination or request of orders, your, your requisition, right? So the pre-analytical phase means I'm looking at my requisition and I'm trying to figure out what do I need to do? What orders do I have? Which tubes am I gonna have to use? What's, right? Those are the things I'm thinking about during the pre-examination process. I'm also looking to make sure who's the patient, who's the physician. All those, remember when I showed you the requisitions? We're thinking about all that during the pre-examination process. All right, next. And again, this is just a Quizlet to help you, um, to help you think about these things. So it says pre-examination process. We're still in pre-examination, pre-analytical phase. What are some things you're doing? Well, you're preparing the patient, right? You're getting the patient prepared. This is pre-collection assessment. So we're asking you, hey, can you tell me your first and last name? At the same time, I'm washing my hands. I'm getting prepared. As I mentioned before, I'm getting my stuff together. This is all pre-analytical. Next, <clears throat> still in the pre-examination or pre-analytical phase, we're actually going to collect the specimen. We're gonna perform the vena puncture or the capillary puncture. In the pre-examination phase, also the pre-analytical phase, we're now labeling the specimen. This is the order in which we're doing it, right? We look at the order, we identify the patient, we gather our supplies, we wash our hands, we do the vena puncture, we're labeling the specimen. This is all pre-analytical because what we're talking about is the end result. Okay, pre-examination process or pre-analytical, we're still talking about it. It also includes post-puncture care. Can you guys tell me what post-puncture care is? What are you doing for post-puncture care? I'm sorry? Applying pressure to the area, getting a gauze, applying pressure, applying a bandage. By the way, whenever you apply pressure, you should be applying a pressure for at least three to five minutes on the area. Because if I'm on a street name blood thinner or hospital name anticoagulant, and you just put it on there for, for press down for five seconds and you remove it, are they gonna bleed? Yes. So we wanna make sure that there's no bleeding going on or continuing. I've seen people just kind of hold it down for five seconds, bandage it up, and this is people who are not even on um, anticoagulants and then they, they walk off and start throwing their supplies away and the patient says, I feel something wet. And you turn around and they're dripping down their arm. It saturated the whole cotton ball and started going down the arm because they didn't hold pressure long enough. So always make sure you, you do with your post-puncture care that you're holding pressure long enough anywhere from three to five minutes. I know it sounds like a long time, but it's, it's the best thing to do. All right, next, pre-examination process. Again, we're not there yet at examining the, um, <coughs> The specimen, but now we have to transport the specimen. We got to take it where? To the lab. Whatever part, whatever, wherever kind of specimen this is, we're talking about blood, of course, it needs to go to the lab. Next, in the pre-analytical phase, we're going to get a receipt of the specimen. Uh, we're going to handle it. We're going to store it. Make sure that we can prove it's there. Maybe you have to sign in in a book. Whatever you have to do, make sure that it's, it's been dropped off and it's at the lab. Okay, pre-examination process still. We're communicating when the specimen is unacceptable. Well, we're not, but the lab is. So the lab might call you and say, like the lab did, hey, the lab you sent, I need four mLs of blood, you only gave me two mLs. Because of this, I can't conduct the test because I needed more blood, especially when it's unacceptable. That's the only time you'll really hear from them if there's something wrong. Okay, pre-analytical phase, they're going to process the specimen. Remember, pre-analytical means we are waiting to see the results. The pre-analytical or pre-examination phase, it may need to be expedited. What is it called when you're expediting a, a lab? Stat. It's a stat order. And how, how quick do you need to do a stat order? As soon as you get the order, it needs to be done within 10 minutes. 
Okay, we're still in the, um, now we're in the examination process, right? This is the analytical phase. Examination process, also known as the analytical phase. This really doesn't have anything to do with you, right? This is kind of the lab doing this part. They're using the appropriate testing methods. Clessy wants to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do on their end to test it, whatever that may be. <clears throat> Still in the examination phase, they're using the appropriate equipment. Making sure it's not expired. <clears throat> Making sure they're, the, they, the controls were done on the equipment, whatever, before they're getting ready to do the test. In the examination process now, we're also performing quality controls. I just said that, right? Also, there's a possibility they may have to troubleshoot equipment. <clears throat> I had to troubleshoot equipment when my centrifuge, <laughs> my centrifuge went haywire and threw a, a specimen out of it, right? I had to troubleshoot, why did this happen? Unfortunately, the specimen was compromised when that happened and I, I had to draw the, I'm gonna have to draw the blood again, but things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, examination process, we're still in the analytical phase. If there is an erroneous result, okay, the quality control error, something happened, the results didn't come out good, they have to troubleshoot that. Don't, aren't you guys glad you don't have to do all this part? <laughs> they may do the test, they may have done everything they were supposed to do in the beginning, but now here we are in the middle of testing it and something went wrong. That's another reason why they tell you to, to send more blood than what you need to. If, if the test only requires one cc, please send four. Because if I'm in the middle of testing it and something goes wrong and I get all the way here, you're gonna have to stick the person again. But if you got extra blood, we're good. So sometimes, you know, fill that tube up as high as you can. We're still in the analytical examination phase. Now, this is when we're reviewing, not we, but they are. They're reviewing and verifying the results that they received. And we're still examining and in, in the analytical phase and they're getting ready to interpret these results. Interpret the inf and any other information that may correlate with those results. Sometimes you get a result and it just doesn't make sense. So I need to look at everything else to make sure that this picture is painted right. Okay, we're still in the examination process analytical phase. And we have to make sure that we get these results back quick. So maintaining a turnaround time for this phase of testing, especially if it's a stat order, it took me 10 minutes to get it to the lab, but look at all the things the lab has to do before they even get the result. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. Well, you should let them know. Like, as soon as you drop it off, you're making sure you, you say this. This is a stat order. You just don't send it, sit it down and walk off. Um, you, let, you get someone's attention. Here's a stat order. And they know it's stat because when they go in the system, they'll see that, that they have to pull the order up in the system themselves, too. They don't just want to test it because you said so. They want to make sure there's an order also. Everyone has to always make sure there's an order. And they'll see that it's stat also. So now they have a certain turnaround time. They're supposed to hurry up and do this test on their end. Now we are in the post-examination process. This is post-analytical phase. And I see a lot of questions on the NHA exam about the post-analytical phase. This is when we're reporting the final results. We got the result, we had to double check and make sure it was the result, but now it's time to report it. So the lab is gonna report this result, the final results. And guess what they also need to do in the post examination phase. If it's, an, if it's like out of range, it's not in the normal parameters, it's considered critical, whether it's too high or too low, not only do they put it in the system, but they need to notify somebody. You can't just put it in the system and say, they'll see it when they see it. <laughs> they need to call you, the phlebotomist. You will definitely, as a phlebotomist, you will definitely get a call or they'll call the doctor, one or the other and they're gonna notify the provider of the critical values when appropriate. They will normally call the doctor first, but if they cannot get a hold of the doctor, they're gonna call you because you, they gotta tell somebody, they can't just go on to the next thing. So then, of course, now it's on you, and you gotta make sure that the doctor finds out. But you're on the floor or something, so it's probably gonna be easier for you to do that. Post-analytical um, phase, also known, again, as the post-examination phase still, you have to define and adhere to the turnaround time. 
So now you've been told of the issue, the critical range. Now you need to do something about it, and you can't sit there and wait 30 minutes or an hour yourself. You gotta make sure you're adhering to that turnaround time. We're still in the post-examination, post-analytical phase, and you, need, you may need to enter critical um, laboratory data yourself, right? Maybe there's something on your end that you need to enter this into or you need to tell someone. Yes. No, this, this, this actually will happen in, even in an outpatient setting. So if, if this is a doctor's office and you came in just to get your regular results and I sent you home, you went home, I sent this off to the lab and all that stuff happened at the lab, and then the next morning, the lab is gonna call me first thing in the morning and say, hey, there's a hu uh, out of range, critically out of range. They won't call you with minimal out of range, but if it's critically out of range, they're gonna let you know. And then I have to document on my end. I was notified by the lab that the glucose was 500. I contacted the patient or whatever. You as the uh, phlebotomist, you would document and say, received a call from the lab, they couldn't get a hold of the doctor. This was the critical result. I was able to get a hold of the doctor at this time. I told him doctor is now aware, right? Then now I as the provider have to go in and say, I got the results, this is my care plan of care, I'm gonna contact the patient, send them to the ER, blah, blah, blah. So every point has to have some form of documentation. If we don't, that goes back to negligence. Remember we talked about that. It's not that we were trying to do harm and abuse the patient, but someone, someone, because that's a lot of people. The person who drew the blood, then it went to the lab, then it went back to the, um, the person who drew the blood because they couldn't get a hold of the doctor, then they got a halt call the doctor, now I got to call the patient. That's a lot of points of contact. And if there's something, some type of break in there, or we didn't document, or something happened wrong, and we even if we still did document, at least we did everything we can do, and we were not negligent. All right, we're still in the post-examination and analytical phase, storing of the specimen. So, did you know if there's any specimens left over, the lab will actually store them just in case. So if I sent over four, C, four mLs and they only used one mL and everything came out perfect, those other three mLs sit in a refrigerator somewhere, usually for about seven, three to seven days. And it sits there because there may be, it's kind of like that person who died but we kept a piece of their DNA even though they're in the grave. We kept a little piece just because we need to test it. Yeah, you never know, something may happen, especially if it was like a murder, you know. We want to figure out what happens later. So this is the, a similar situation. Maybe I, the doctor, I'm like, I don't care what y'all did. Y'all did a lot of analytical testing. You, you, you used your controls. You did this, you did that. But I just really want somebody to test it again. Something about it don't sit right with me because the patient doesn't look like what you're telling me, mm -hmm. right? So now we can go back and use it again or compare it to something. Or maybe I might say, now that you did that test, I want you to do another one. But I can't get the patient in here until another two days. They already went out of town but the blood you have and it was in a purple tube top, I can still do this other test that I wanna do. So can you please do some more testing on it for, in a different way? So that's why we're storing the specimen. Okay, we're still in the post, all this is gonna be post-examination phase, right? Because we're, we're already done, we got the results. You need to obtain information for follow-up or repeat the test if needed. Sometimes if the results are way off, we just repeat it to confirm it. And then finally, any delays that happen, any failures, any critical values, all those things need to be communicated. So what I want you to take away from this, because again, I, I can't stress enough, I know this is gonna be somewhere on your, fi your exam, final exam as well as your NHA exam, the clinical pathways for CLESI. <clears throat> there is the pre-examination, the examination, and the post-examination, and we're talking more about the values here, not the patient, right? So don't think like, oh, pre-examination before I look at the arm and draw the blood. No, I'm looking at all of that. All of that, all the way to me getting that um, to the lab is all pre-examination because it's all about examining the specimen. Got it? Any questions about that?